Monday morning edition, Overreaction Monday, back here after what was a thrilling FCS weekend. A little bit of everything. We had another FCS over FBS win. Congrats to the Monmouth Hawks who beat Florida International over the weekend. And I'd say a mixed bag of results from the top teams. We welcome Sam Herter in, who joins us each and every Monday from Hero Sports, Bet MGM, and covers everything uh, FCS related as we almost wrap up the non-conference schedule. We still have some uh, some non-conference games this weekend. What's the best way to describe what we saw this weekend? It was, I, I I have a hard time wrapping my mind or my arms around it right now. Yeah, it was... It wasn't as chaotic as a weekend, I guess, as some past weekends. Uh, we didn't see a whole lot of upsets. Um, so that just from a top 25 order, that makes things a little <laughs> easier, uh, I guess. But uh, I don't know. Things got dicey a little bit for teams like Montana. Um, I guess NDSU for part of that game. Yep. Things got a little dicey until the buys had pulled away. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I thought teams like Illinois State looked really good. Um, I thought SEMO looked uh, really yeah. good. And so I, I just think through four weeks, I've already kind of seen the question pop up on social media of, you know, is the FCS championship pitcher wide open? And I kind of push back on that. I think what we've seen usually is there's there's parity at the start of the year when every team is fresh. But by the time November, November hits comes around, the cream rises yeah. to the top uh, depth kind of takes over for these power programs. And we'll probably typically see the, the, the usual suspects deep in the playoff bracket. Let me get to Montana first. Montana's trailing Western Carolina for a good part of that first half. They turned it on and, and pulled away Western Carolina is, and they're dealing with a quarterback injury now as well uh, out of that game. What do we make of the Grizz? Where, where are you at with Montana right now? Yeah, I, I still think they, they're they a top 10 team for sure in my mind. Uh, I think they have a pretty high ceiling just with the overall talent <clears throat> that they have on their team. I just think their their offensive line is still gelling a little bit. Their quarterback position is still gelling as well, even though I think Ayat continues co- to, to take step forwards uh, every week. He's only a redshirt freshman, and so I think he can – I know they have an upperclassman, Logan Fife, an FBS transfer, yeah. but I think if you just lean on the on the younger kid, he can be your quote unquote, uh, quote unquote franchise quarterback. So I, I would lean on Ayad if I if I were them instead of doing this two quarterback system, and then defensively they just they run a really weird defensive system, um, and so when you have a bunch of new starters on defense, I think sometimes it takes a while for you to execute at a high level, and they also brought in a high number of transfers, right. and so having those FBS transfers kind of come in and understand your system and know what to do in certain moments. I think that is a part of it as well defensively where they're just not, I mean, giving up 35 points is a lot for Montana, even though Western Carolina is a really good offense. That's still a lot of points to be given up. If you're the Grizz, especially at home to a non-conference team, that's the alarming part. Yeah. And you know, they have a really good cornerback Trevin Gradney on one side, but I don't know how good their quarter, their cornerback play is um, on on the opposite side. And uh, you know, safety position is, is is okay for them. Um, But yeah, they they gave up a lot of explosive plays to Western Carolina, especially a lot of 50, 50 balls where it's third and long and Cole Gonzalez just chucks it deep and one-on-one scenario, Western Carolina won those 50, 50 balls on Saturday. Uh, my boss is a indirect fan of the Mercer Bears. You want to give him some love at 4-0 and and 2-0 and in SoCon play? Yeah, I mean, especially they, they came on the radar last week when yep. they beat Chattanooga, who was kind of hovering around that, that top 10 spot. And so, you know, defensively last week at this time, their numbers were outrageous. They were like allowing <laughs> like 13.8 yeah. rushing yards per game and like 0.7 yards per rushing attempt. Um, like five points per game that obviously all went up, you know, the Citadel uh, scored 21 points on them. But uh, for those first few weeks, Mercer was playing really, really good defense and they still are playing really good defense. Obviously those numbers that I just said, those weren't going to hold up. Those were just astronomical <laughs> numbers, but uh, yeah, they're playing well. Uh, I met their coach, coach Jacobs, um, their first year head coach. Uh, he's coming from the D2 ranks. Um, he's a good coach. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he brought in a really good running back, uh, D2 All-American with them. And so, um, yeah, I, I think they're they're looking strong so far. And uh, so far, possibly looking like the best team in the SoCon. Although ETSU. I wanted to go there. We, yep. Yeah, we weren't sure, you know, were they that good or not? Did they just put everything into that NDSU game? But they handled Elon yes. on the road. And I thought Elon was pretty good uh, coming into last weekend. That was the thing, Sam, that I saw after I got home from the Dome on Saturday night. I wanted to see what ETSU did to Elon. They blew him out on the road. They won by 20s. And that, all right, 
that got my attention. Like, okay, they may be certainly be better than what we thought going into the season, but there wasn't a Bison hangover. They hammered a team on the road. Yeah, and you often see that, too, when a team plays NDSU tough, or even when a team plays South Dakota State tough, that next week is kind of a hangover performance for them. And we kind of saw that after UIW pushed South Dakota State. They had a bit of a hangover for the first half against Southern Illinois. Then UIW came back in the second half a couple of weekends ago to make it a game. And so that's where I was at with ETSU. I just wasn't sure emotionally, physically uh, where they would be. Uh, But, you know, maybe it's one of those things where, if the media and everyone else is always talking about, Oh, it could be an emotional hangover. Like it can be hard to have an emotional hangover because the locker room is probably like, okay, well we can't have, uh, we can't let our emotion from the yeah. previous week carry over. And so, yeah, they look sharp. Um, especially the quarterback play um, defensively, they look sharp again. They, they, they got after Elon's pretty good rushing defense as well on the ground. So that was a really good performance by ETSU. I didn't have time to get into this on bison game day, but you're the guy I want to ask South Dakota finally got it, its first FCS win. Excuse me, as they beat Drake. But we know what happened with Portland State. It was ruled the game is a known contest. It's not a forfeit. So what do we think is going to happen here? They have two non-games that don't count, in my mind. I know they count the Northern State game counts, but it doesn't, in my mind, because they played a Division II team. And then they, now they have a game that doesn't. How is that, you think, going to affect them when we get to November? Yeah, the, the whole non-counter, but not a non-counter thing <laughs> we found out last year where – D2 wins do count on your resume, right. but d- sometimes they just look at Division One wins as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's weird that even though South Dakota beat Drake, you know, that's still an FCS win, South Dakota still hasn't beaten a scholarship FCS team, and we're, it's going to be five weeks into the season right. until we see them play a uh, ranked scholar, or a, a scholarship FCS team. So, uh, yeah, the – the Drake win, you know, was solid for them to just get that FCS win on the board. Uh, I do think that Portland State cancellation uh, could be costly just because if South Dakota finishes eight and three, you know, they could have been nine and three right. instead had they played that game because they, they probably would have went to Portland State and won. And the eight, eight wins or nine wins, that could be the difference between the eight seed or the 10 seed. And all of a sudden you're playing in the first round and, and hosting a game as the number 10 seed. So I... I, you know, South Dakota has, has moved on, you know, from it, uh, I think, at this point. But I still think they're frustrated, partially because they had to travel that far and, and the cost and all that. But I think more so the frustration was this was an opportunity for us to get to, to get a Division One win, and now we can't make up this game. And so I think that is where kind of the long-term frustration built in for USD. I think you hit the nail on the head. If they're 9-2 and two or 8-3 and three when we get to the end of the road, I mean, that that they're going to look at that and say, well, that there was a win sitting there for us that we didn't get a chance, and we flew all that way. That I'm really fascinated with the committee when we get to that point, if they're in the conversation, and I think they will be, of how that's going to play out. I'm sure they'll they'll talk about it because the committee has so many notes and all that, but it's still – I think it would be too slippery of a slope if, if, let's say, South Dakota did finish 9-2. and two. Yeah. I, I, The committee could say, well, they, they, they should be 10-2, and two, but at the that's kind of a, a big assumption that you would just assume South Dakota would go to Portland state and get a win. I mean, they probably would have, but to just assume yeah. that and say, and treat them as 10 and two instead of nine and two. I, I don't know if the committee kind of can jump to those type of assumptions. Idaho won. They scraped out a win. It, it was a blowout and then Abilene Christian got tight. So what do we make of, of Idaho now getting ready for a monster big sky game coming up this week? Yeah, I really like Idaho so far. They, they're my number one team uh, right now just because ranking off of perform- performances so far and a little bit of resume and eye test and all that. I just I think the Vandals look like the most complete team. You know, they, they, they competed with Oregon really well. They beat FBS Wyoming, and now they already have two ranked wins yeah. uh, on, their, on their resume. So they definitely looked the part early on. Uh, they were dominating Abilene Christian, and then momentum just kind of flipped suddenly. Uh, I think it was – 27 to 11 um, and Idaho had the ball at like the 30 yard line in scoring position fourth and one instead of kicking the field goal or running the ball they throw a deep shot to the end zone incomplete Abilene Christian turns it into a score right away and then they score again yeah. soon after and all of a sudden it's 27 24 <laughs> when it could have been possibly 30 to 11 and so um, kind of a mixed bag with Idaho there you as a top four team you would have liked to see them finish stronger than what they did uh, but I think for 
three or so quarters, the Vandals really looked apart on the road against a ranked team. It is aiming towards October 12th and October 19th, the two ESPN games that they picked. Idaho plays at Montana State October 12th. The following week, the Jacks play the Bison. Those are, <laughs> if you're going to get FCS national games, those might be the two games of the year. Yeah, separation Saturday. Yeah. We, can, we can already call yeah, it just yeah. so we can <laughs> we can figure out kind of the, the top four here with, I mean, I, I'd i be fine with anyone voting South Dakota State number one, North Dakota State number one. I think Montana State has a yes. pretty good argument yep. for number one, and, and I think Idaho is also getting a few number yep. one uh, votes. And so you always kind of can sort things out a little easier once conference play uh, hits because some of these non-conference games can be so hard to, to really gauge. Uh, but yeah, once now that conference play is hitting and there's so many, as we know, there's so many Valley teams that are ranked and so many big sky teams that are ranked. Um, I, we're going to figure out how good these teams are pretty quickly. Before we get to your games of the weekend upcoming, uh, was there a team or individual, the best performance of the weekend in your mind from this past weekend that really stood out? Uh. Yeah, I think, like I said, SEMO looks really good. It's a good um, win. I mean, they're, they're a team that should be 4-0 uh, right now, but they had a really close FBS loss that they probably oh. should have uh, pulled out. Uh, that South Dakota State running back uh, is well. Um, his name is escaping me. I think he's only a retro freshman, but he was like their number three running back, and he went like five carries <laughs> for 170 yards, three – um, he kind of looked like Isaiah Davis running uh, out there. And so um, his individual performance, uh, you know, I really think was impressive, especially because South Dakota State's offense, especially the passing game is still kind of, it's kind of choppy. There's no real flow to it. There's not great timing between Gronowski and his, and his wide receivers. There's also been some drops that hasn't helped. Um, and so for, for this young running back to, to step up and have the game that he did um, really I think elevated South Dakota state when their offense was, wasn't clicking too much. Kirby Voorhees, who you're asking about that. Yeah, who it was. He was, yep. a, he was <laughs> five carries for 130 and three. He was all right. South Dakota yeah. state rolled uh, over Southeast from Louisiana. Uh, you do it each and every Monday. Give us your top matchups, the games you're looking forward to here for week five. Yeah, it'll be pretty Valley and big sky heavy just because right. like we talked about all, all these teams are, are ranked pretty high, but Southern Illinois goes to South Dakota. Uh, that'll be a fun Monster one. Uh, we'll see where Southern Illinois kind of goes from here after it's loss. They'll be without their starting quarterback for a, a number of weeks with a broken hand. And then a good test for South Dakota, you know, a team that we were kind of up and down on in the off season was last year, a one-time thing. Are they going to build off of that? We still don't know the answer to that question because like we talked about, they they've only played one FCS team so far. Uh, the next one, North Dakota state goes to Illinois state. Uh, really, really good test for the bison two weeks ago. I, I wasn't super high on Illinois state because they were kind of, you know, scraping by, but this last week they, they beat up on Eastern Illinois and some people might be saying, Oh, Eastern Illinois, they're not that great, but. Eastern actually beat Illinois State last year. That's right. And Eastern finished eight and three and returned a bulk of their starters. So I thought that was overall an impressive win for Illinois State. Uh, Lamar goes to Central Arkansas, two teams that are ranked right now. Uh, Central Arkansas to me looks really good. Um, they also should be four and zero with an FBS win, but a controversial call at the end there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Central Arkansas, uh, they, they're looking phenomenal. Shandarek Powell on offense, David Walker on defense, and then lastly, Idaho goes to UC Davis. I think UC Davis is good, but I don't know how good just yet. Uh, so a great opportunity for them. Um, and then Idaho, I mean, this is, you play two FBS opponents, <laughs> now three straight ranked FCS opponents. The Vandals are getting tested uh, early. So um, uh, that's, that's a, I think that one in North Dakota State, Illinois State are probably the two most intriguing out of this I, bunch. I'm right with you on that one. And I love it, by the way, because by the time we get back from normal, that game will be kicking off so I can watch the full uh, Idaho Davis experience. But I'm with you. If they get that one, Idaho, I'm talking, that I'm not sure. Obviously, they don't play Montana. They have uh, the Cats on the road in Bozeman. But even if they fall there, that's a heck of a resume to say in November, they're looking pretty, they're looking awfully good. They scared the heck out of Oregon. If I'm, if they go 10 and two, they're in the conversation for a top four. I think regardless how it plays out. 
Yeah, I think they have to be, especially if, if that loss is if that one loss is to Montana State right. as a, comp- a competitive one. Uh, yeah, I think Idaho can win this one. I don't think Montana State is going to be tested until that Idaho game. So that one is monster. in Bozeman in a few weeks here is going to be a monster game. The uh, the Monmouth win over FIU for people that didn't see it, go back and watch. We didn't have time to get it on the show today. Remarkable finish there, but uh, that's another nice uh, win in the cap for the FCS here. Yeah, that's uh, FCS uh, win number five over an FBS opponent this year. That's still below average, actually, but it's more than it's one more than last year. And yeah, Monmouth nearly lost that game. Uh, I swear there has been at least 20 to 25 one score (laughs) FCS FBS losses where the FCS team just frankly choked it away. You know, at the end there, that almost happened to Monmouth. Uh, They was one of those prevent defense things and FIU just kept on going down the field and then. Uh, they hit a pass. Uh, they run toward the end zone. The receiver is fighting for extra yardage, fighting, fighting, fighting. All of a sudden, the ball pops loose, and Monmouth recovers and and wins the game. But I was already typing up, all right, another one-score FCS, <laughs> FBS loss. The FCS team kind of blew this one, but nope. They, they poked the ball out and got the fumble recovery. So uh, good for Monmouth. And FIU is just a really struggling yeah. program right now but is what it is before we let you go sam this could be a massive week realignment wise uh we're hearing between if memphis is basically the balls in their court about what they do if they stay in the american or go to the pac-12 the repercussions are going to be felt here sacramento state has made it known they are putting a full-on full court press that they want to move up to potentially even the pac-12 tarleton's out there obviously both the dakotas this could be a really telling week of what happens in realignment yeah, it'll it'll be very very intriguing, and I know you know some people are already pretty worn out with all the realignment talk. But I, I think when it comes to the possibility of North Dakota State, especially South Dakota State, potentially the Montana schools, like we're talking, the FCS landscape could be totally flipped if if certain dominoes fall and right. the top four powers all join the Mountain West, or maybe two of the top powers, South Dakota State, North Dakota State, join the Mountain West. And then, you know, Tarleton is out there, UC Davis, Sac State are out there as, as potential candidates. So um, I don't know how it's all going to fall. Um, you know, even trying to guess what happens, you you, you feel 0% confidence in trying to guess what happens. But as we've talked about all along, so many dominoes need to fall for NDSU to get to the FBS and the, the major domino that has to fall is for the Mountain West to lose multiple teams. Yep. And they've lost four teams and maybe one or two more coming for the Mountain West. So, um, yeah, I think if if you're NDSU followers, you should be turning on alerts from from some of the head honchos, uh, college football realignment <laughs> experts, to because you never know when news could break. No. So it could be a fascinating week or, or it could extend into the next week. You just don't know how quickly or how slowly these things turn out yeah here we go great to see you bud thanks as always have a great week enjoy the games we'll talk to you next monday all right all right thank you sam Erner, hero sports bet mgm joins us each and every monday to recap the weekend that was in fcs football and he's dead out on that we'll save more of that talk when colpack joins us coming up uh in our next hour we'll break we'll wrap up hour one as i mentioned jeff colpack coming up in hour two got a bunch of emails to recap from the bison game over towson And look ahead as the Redbirds and Brock Spack, Illinois State on deck as we roll on an overreaction Monday returns after this.